This is what we're gonna do in this video. We're going to replicate this sexy ribbon that our amazing design team crafted up for a back to school sale that we had running for a little bit on our website. Now, we used this ribbon to promote an offer, but you can use ribbons as a way to get people to opt into your email list. You can have them go to a checkout page, whatever works best for you. Without further ado, let's get started. Really quick before we get started, we're gonna be using Thrive Leads to build our ribbon. I love Thrive Leads mostly because it allows us to use the technology behind Thrive Architect to build our ribbons, our pop-ups, our excellent temp forms. And what that means is that we can design our opt-in forms to look however we want. You know, we have no limitations as to what we can do design-wise. If you still don't have your license for Thrive Leads, now is a good time to hit pause on this video, click on the link in the description box and sign up for Thrive Suite. That will unlock access to every tool that you need to build a high converting and scalable WordPress business. All right, time to roll up our sleeves and get started building. The first step when we create a new opt-in form inside Thrive Leads is to create a new type of lead group. Groups are a simple way of organizing all of our forms into a category, for example. You can have a lead group for a back to school sale. You can have one for a Black Friday sale, you know, one for Christmas season and so forth and so on. We then need to create a new form. In this case, we'll be working with a ribbon for which we need to create a new design and we will do this with Thrive Leads Visual Editor. Now, a cool thing about Thrive Leads is that even though we can custom build forms from scratch, and this is what we're gonna be doing in this video, there are dozens upon dozens upon dozens upon dozens, like I can't even count the amount of high quality conversion focused templates ready for you to use with just a couple of clicks. But in our case, like I said, we'll be building our ribbon from scratch. Okay, step one to building our ribbon is to take care of the background section where we're going to be working on. You will see that by default it's green, but we don't want green. We're going to be getting rid of the background color and use an image instead. And we're also going to give this background section a minimum height. Now, the minimum height is not something that you really need because as soon as you start filling up the background section with content, it's going to get taller by nature. But until that happens, I like giving it some height just so, you know, just so that I can have some temporary space to work with. Now that we have a background section, I'm spending some time adjusting the layout of my columns. I need five different columns. Now, I knew how wide each of these columns where the content is going to go is, but if you were to work your way up to building this ribbon without the blueprint that I had, uh, you know, it'd be 100% okay to play this by eye. You don't have to be super accurate so long as the spacing more or less looks like the design that you're going after. In fact, you'll see that throughout the video, I'm constantly playing with the width of, you know, of each column until I'm happy with the way they look. Now we just need to customize the content of each of our columns. Our first column is a fancy one. It's made up of an image and a text element. The word school with this fancy art form um, is something that you would do outside of Thrive Leads, probably in Photoshop, or if you're a Mac user, I know of an app called Art Text that allows you to create fancy text elements like this one where you have lighting and shadows and fancy borders. And you know, then you can just import it into your website as an image. And then of course, the back to part is a legit text element built entirely with Thrive Architect. We simply give it some background color, adjust the weight of the font, and give it a little bit of internal padding to make sure the text aligns nicely with our bottom image. Our second column is one that's going to allow us to learn some cool things. First of all, I got rid of the gutter width for my set of five columns. I did it mainly because I didn't need the extra space in between columns, but you may decide to keep it if you want. Then I simply inserted this cool discount image and I also brought in a little heart in the form of an image and there's two things that we can learn from this. First things first, absolute positioning. Absolute positioning we've talked about already in other YouTube videos. It allows us to create a relationship between the element that we're currently editing, which in our case it's this heart image, and the parent container in which it lives, which in our case it's the second column, right? If we assign our heart image to have an absolute positioning, we can have it stick to the top right corner of its parent container, which is the column, right? And this is what it's going to give our second column, this feeling of having the heart sit on top of our discount image. But in order to actually have it sit on top of the image, we also need to understand C indexes. In CSS, which is the programming language that we're speaking with Thrive Leads, the higher C index we give to an element, the further up on the page it will display. And so we just need to make sure that we give our heart a higher C index than the one that we gave 
our discount image. Onto our third column, this one is fairly straightforward. We simply need to drag in a countdown timer, but before doing so, you'll see that I'm dropping a content box and I'm giving it a maximum width and a maximum height. And I did this to make sure that I could contain my countdown timer inside this proportion. Now, don't forget to get rid of the margins and paddings that content boxes come with. Then it's just a question of customizing the appearance of our countdown timer itself. Again, what's so cool about being able to build our opt-in forms with Thrive Leads is that we have full control over the design and aesthetics of our elements. We can customize the background color of our, of our countdown timer, you know, the, the fonts that we're using and you know, just about anything. And remember the content box where we've placed the countdown timer inside of? Well, our sneaky designers, instead of using regular Thrive Architect borders, they gave the content box a background image that consists of a border, but it's hand-drawn. It's like, it's a hand-drawn border, which kind of matches the back to school vibe that we're going after. Our fourth column is just an image of a pencil. And then our fifth column is going to be a button that will serve as our main call to action. Now I'm using negative margins to stack some of these elements on top of each other, right? I'm giving the pencil image some left negative margin to put it underneath the countdown timer. And I'm doing the same thing with our call to action button. However, if we wish to customize which of these elements come out on top of each other, again, we need to make sure we adjust the C indexes for each of them. Remember, the higher the C index, the further up the page the element will be positioned. Now, let's quickly talk about making the ribbon responsive because right now, well, it's a little bit chaotic on mobile devices. I'm gonna show you two ways in which you can make this responsive. The first method is to insert a new set of columns underneath the ones that we've already created. And we're going to make sure that our original set of columns only displays on desktop. And the new set of columns only displays on mobile and tablet. Now, what's special about this new set of columns is that we're only going to have three of them. We're going to have our back to school text and image on the left-hand column, our countdown timer in the center column, and then our call to action button in the right hand column. Now switching over to mobile view, we're going to place the pencil image as a background image for the first column. Notice how when I'm doing this, I'm having it not cover the entire column, but instead I'm containing it. And containing the background image essentially keeps the original aspect of the image, but it also gets scaled down to make sure that it fits nicely inside the column. Now you may think that this ribbon as it is right now, it's, it could be a little bit too invasive, right? I mean, I can see that point being made. It, it doesn't look bad, but it is covering a big part of the screen. So here's something else that we can do. Let's scale down the back to school image and let's also make sure that we bring down the font size for our back to. We're also going to drastically reduce the size of our countdown timer and the content box that holds it. And our pencil image that used to be a background image for our left-hand column is now going to be a background image for the entire set of three columns. And as you can see, by bringing down the size of our first two columns, we can make them fit nicely into a single row. You know, and this is going to obviously drastically reduce the height of our entire ribbon. Okay, I have to say this has been something, um, but hey, it's been totally worth it, right? I mean, these opt-in forms that you can build with Thrive Leads can be super sexy and they're going to want to make your visitors want to click through which is the ultimate goal now if you found this video helpful a massive thumbs up button would be greatly appreciated and if you still haven't signed up for thrive leads you can get it as part of thrive suite by clicking in the link down in the description box below i'm down in the comment section in case you have any questions and it's been it's been a real pleasure thank you thank you so much i appreciate your time bye